Hi, my name is Mike, and this is my 2005 V8 LR3. Uh, I'm installing the two inch heavy duty coil spring conversion kit from Atlantic British. It's the old man emu springs, they're right there. Uh, there's a bunch of videos uh, on the internet with guys doing coil conversions. Um, but what I just discovered when I picked this kit up, um, just so you know, it is May of 2022, is that the video that Atlantic British has on their website is, I guess the modulator is different now. It used to be some little orange modulator and there was a bunch of plug-in things you had to do and press buttons and now it's changed. And it's this little blue and black thing in the bag, which is completely different instructions. Uh, so the video is essentially useless that they have on their website, at least when you get to the wiring. Um, and I did call them um, and I was told over the phone that uh, I need to clear all the codes um, on the truck and disconnect the battery before doing the install, which actually is not in these instructions anywhere, which I thought was kind of bananas. Um, Luckily, I do have a gap tool, so I am able to clear the codes, uh, but I guess anybody who sees this and is looking at doing the coil conversion, you need to own a gap tool or something similar so you can clear all the codes properly before you do the install, which they don't tell you before you buy it. Uh, anyway, um, okay, so uh, I've got the coils installed on the back of my LR3. Um, and I'm going to now move on to the front. Uh, quick note on the back. Probably it'll be the front as well. Um, all pretty straightforward. It went on okay. Not a bunch of issues. But these... There's three of these on the top of the strut. The one in the back on the inside is hell on earth to get at. So one thing you definitely want to have when you're doing this job uh, is a 15 mil ratchet wrench. I'm if working you on getting the front air struts off. Uh, just wanted a quick note. I had told you that it's really hard to get at the that 15 mil nut on the back uh, shock. On the front, I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but I couldn't do it. I could not get in here to get it loosened. So I had to take off the whole wheel well cover and the fender flare. Um, and then when I do that, I've got some playroom back here to get at it. Uh, that's an FYI. I uh, also wanted to quick note in case I forget, in the instructions, they say to remove the brake caliper. I don't know why it's nowhere near anything you're working on. So don't bother removing the brake caliper. Um, fun times. Okay, so first thing on the docket, remove the footrest by first popping the cover. Okay. Oh, that's lovely. Look at that water in there. Great. Um, all right. Okay, next on the list is to remove the 10 mil screws here and here. Uh, to get the foot rest out. Okay, so I've removed the foot rest. I've removed the uh, hood release, which is right here, um, with the Torx, and then this whole panel right here popped out pretty easy. And now we're moving on to the next page. Okay, so I just removed the underneath panel here, screw here, screw here. They said to move it out of the way. I just took the thing right out. And I did this already, but so I kind of skipped this. But the panel right here under the steering wheel, it just pops out. So I pulled that out a little while ago. Uh, okay, so now we have to locate the EAS ECU. It will be mounted fairly high up on the left wall. The cavity just exposed uh, with the removal of panels. Okay, let's see if it's up here. Um... guessing that is this little metal box um now we gotta get that out uh, so there's the ecu box uh yeah there's a f 10 mil socket at the top which loosened off super easy got my hand up there and loosened it um it's you gotta kind of push it up a bit to release the bottom clips and then you just kind of have to f around with it a bit to get it down here so you can access it 
Okay, so now we're getting to the nitty gritty. Uh, locate connector C0867 and unplug from the ECU. Uh, here's the ECU. That's the connector I've unplugged, which I'm guessing is the right one because it's red here and it's red in the picture. Um, Lord help me. Okay, so next we are supposed to locate, uh, examine the back side of the connector, identify the data wires on LR3 Range Rover Sport. The wires are in position 16 and 19 on the connector. Um, so I just took the connector, just like the picture, right here, boom, boom. And then um, I'm just counting over. Uh, so I count it over to find the yellow brown, and then here's the yellow black. Okay, so uh, we've got to basically clean the ends so we can connect the EAS module. So this plugs into this guy and this is all gonna wire up to this perfectly and work. So anyway, they tell you to strip the ends so those are ready to connect. And then these four ends, that and that. And we're using these little posi lock things here, which I've never used. I actually feel like they're kind of hard to put on, but maybe people love them. Anyways, you lock things. Like I said, I've never used them before. I feel like they're, they're good, but one thing that they don't kind of tell you is these ends, right? Like usually you want the end nice and tight. I kind of find if you fray that end a tiny bit, it fits into the posi lock better. Um, it's one thing I noticed. Okay, as I'm making my way through here, um, just following the instructions, I'm just gonna read this really quickly. Yellow, brown on the ECU side, which is this thing, goes to brown, which is here. Uh, and then you just follow these instructions, yellow, brown vehicle side to yellow, yellow, black ECU side to orange. And now I'm on yellow, black vehicle side, which is hidden up here, um, to green. So what I've been doing is here's the green, this is how this little thing works. Cause I didn't know how these worked, man, before. So you put the end on like that, just goes like that, screws back on. Should be nice and tight. Um, and also to like check those once you screw it on, just in case you didn't screw up. Um, even though there's nowhere else to go, I'm just going to read this anyway. Yellow, black, vehicle side, which is the last one, to green. So here's green. I'm going to peel that guy off. Didn't leave myself a whole lot of room up there. This is going to be fun. Okay, so as per instructions here, uh, we've done all the attaching. Um, we've spliced our ECU wires and we're connecting the module connector. Uh, and Page five of seven, whoo, almost there. Okay, where are we at now? Using the small red brown posi tap, which is this thing here. I would say that's gray. Anyway, uh, connect the red wire from the filter, uh, which is this thing here, uh, to the green white wire. You do not need to cut the wire. We are just tapping into the power of this wire. So this is interesting. Uh, this has a little point on it. And then this will catch the green white wire and you just screw it together and it just taps into it to connect. Um, no splicing and all that jazz. Let's see how this works. Okay, so we just did that little splice tap. This is a mess, so you, if you can't see. Anyway, but you sort of see the gray cap on the red one. It just hits the point and tightens on. And I guess that's what it does. Fun part is I don't really know if everything's connected properly until I put my battery back in and start the truck up and then it's mayhem. It's not mayhem, it's gonna work properly. Of course it's gonna work great. Okay, so your ECU box here, on the other side, there's a plug here. It's the other big plug, this thing here. Uh, they say to pull this out and locate the black wire, uh, pin 24, um, which is, basically right at the this is like one of those horrible videos right at the end and it's actually thicker um i hope that's it that's what it looks like in the picture anyway see the photo there right on the end and then we're going to do the same thing we just did with this red one we're going to basically 
take the last black wire from the modulator plug and we're gonna tap into that, which I guess powers it. Let's see what happens. Okay, so there's what we just juiced into on that plug. And that's the last of our stuff on here. Now this is the part that I didn't like, right? Like we just did the black connector. And then after that, it just says, reinstall all the panels and footrest. It actually never tells you to plug this in. Um, and I don't know if these lights mean anything, like, right? So I don't know, that's the part that kind of bummed me out. Um, so I'm just gonna plug this in because I assume that's what you're supposed to do. And I'm gonna put everything back together. And um, I'm gonna attach my battery and then we're gonna start it up, you and me, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so round two. First one did not work well. Key in the ignition. Okay. Okay, parking brake fault. Transmission fault. HDC fault, system unavailable, sweet. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off, turn it back on, see what happens. I don't know why the parking brake thing is flashing. Okay, so now what do we got? We got Check engine light is on. Um, no other lights are on. I'm just gonna close the door. See what happens when I put it in reverse. Okay, it moves. So, um, we're gonna check that check engine situation. That's a happy face. Okay, so update. I didn't want to bother sitting there frigging around with it on video. It's waste everybody's time. Look at that dash. That's a beautiful dash on an LR3. Can you see it? Yeah. No faults, no nothing. Um, the little lights on the tires here are flashing. I don't really care. Terrain response is lit up here, which is supposed to. This shouldn't be lit up, obviously, because it's not. So terrain response works. Um, there was some parking brake weirdness, transmission weirdness, all kinds of weird shit going on. I'm kind of embarrassed, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, cause this is hopefully gonna help you. So I didn't bother cleaning all this stuff up. I just put the battery in and thought I'm gonna try and start it. So I put the battery in, try and started it, and I forgot to plug in the main ECU plugs. This guy and the one in the back, the ones that I had taken out to do all the work on, I didn't even plug them back in. So of course the thing went haywire. Um, so, uh, now it's fired back up and um, everything seems to be working. Um, I'm gonna drive it for a few days and then see if anything pops up and then hopefully this is gonna help you with your uh, coil spring conversion. Uh, Cause it was damn scary.